Hey everybody, our party just had their first session in the Netherdeep, and we're going to talk about it, so let's dig in. <laughs> so, let's talk about what went well. My party is really enjoying learning about Elixian's past through the living memories, so shout out to the authors of this book for that one. They're really, really enjoying this. What could be better? I feel like I could lean a little bit more into the roleplay of Elixian. It's going okay, but I feel like I could always push it a little bit further. Otherwise, I feel like this session went really well. So let's talk about what happened during our session. My party, when they woke up the, that morning, they received a note from the Crimson Company. And the note from the Crimson Company basically just said, hey, thanks for fighting us in the Bowl of Judgment. We had a ton of fun. We're ready for a rematch. We're not going to be able to join you in the Rift. My party asked them to join them in the Rift, and they said yes, but then the Allegiance has, had, has tasked them with other business. My party believes that they are already in the Rift and are taking care of business, so we may play with that a little bit. We'll see. After they read through the note, they went and talked to Jamil, who gave them more information on the Nether Deep, and basically said, we need to shut down the Rift ASAP because the Consortium and the Allegiance are getting out of hand with this Ruidium collection. The last past seven days, things have gotten worse. It's basically an arms race at this point. We just need to shut it down as soon as we can. And my party was like, yep, that sounds good. Any advice? And he just said, not make sure you've got Ruidium items. So there were a couple of members of my party that didn't have any, but they had also turned in a bunch of them earlier on in the campaign. So they were able to pick a couple of items from those. After all of that was said and done, they headed straight to the Nether Deep. <laughs> when they went to open the Rift, just like it says in the book, they took a bunch of damage if they didn't make their save. And I think only one party member did. So they took 30 something points of damage to start their journey into the nether deep then they were transported to another plane of existence the nether deep itself in n1 the antechamber room they had a pretty decently long fight with the two light devourers and the slithering bloodfin dimitri pretty much fought the slithering bloodfin by himself and then the rest of the party tried to take on the light devourers and they were kind of holding back their spells a little bit and there's some of their beefier things because i it's the first room in the dungeon so eventually dimitri was swallowed by the slithering bloodfin but shortly after after that, the party took out the bloodfin and then it exploded and everybody took damage. Um, and then they were also able to take care of the light devourers. One thing I was a little bit disappointed in, nobody used any like radiant damage spells. So they did light devourers didn't get to use that ability, but that's okay. It was just a they, me thing. It was totally fine. After they were all done with the fight, they were like, okay, let's take a short rest here. So they had a short rest. We gave them a vision from the Apotheon lore table and they moved on. The next room, we had our first living memory and boy, is my party really enjoying these. So they show up in Alexian's childhood home. They look around and there's radium all over stuff. There's toys all over the place. They do an investigation check and notice the name of Elixian on the rocking horse. And so they decided, you know what, can we take this? And I was like, yeah, it would probably fit in your bag. It's kind of a smaller one. So they put it in there. Jimmy's, I think Jimmy's the one that took it and put it in his bag. And he has been testing it on everything that they've run into in the nether deep so far. So after they explored the, the room, they kind of explored the house a little bit and they heard the thumping noises from outside. So they went outside and saw the shadowy figures from Elixian's memory beating up on his parents and none of my party was okay with that. <laughs> they immediately took off after them. Uh, four of them met them in the middle. They had a, a fight. I reduced the hit points a little bit because I wanted to keep the pacing up. They took care of them pretty quick. A couple of them got some hits in. They're also not super strong and my party's AC is pretty high, most of them. So they got a couple of hits in in the couple of rounds of combat, but that was it before things were ended. I had the parents of Elixian make it feel as if, as if each individual party member was being looked at and talked to. So if you asked Iris, they were talking directly to her. But then if you went and asked Jimmy, it was the same thing. He was being directly talked at by Elixian's parents and just said, thanks. You'll No one will ever understand or whatever it is in the book that they say. My party was not a fan of innocent people getting hurt, though. So they took care of them which will help in the long run. So they get back, Elixir basically says thanks, and they're in the regular nether deep. So from there, they went left and headed into N4 and were taken off into another living memory. And this is the one where the soldiers are beating up on the innocent townspeople, basically pillaging the town that they just helped save. And eventually one of them stabs an innocent guy for not giving him what he wanted. A little bit of role play here. My partner was like, excuse me, sir, that is not okay. Jimmy kind of took the lead in this conversation, did his best to persuade him that this isn't necessary. You're protecting them. They are still entitled to their own rights. You're not entitled to give them everything they had. The, uh, the soldier was arguing, we should be, they should be super grateful and give us what they want. Eventually through some checks, Jimmy persuaded them to stand down, though they were not happy about it. And they kind of gave them the look and they talked to the party like they were Elixian again. He said, you're lucky you're in charge. Otherwise, you know, things would be different basically is how that one ended up. Then Jimmy went over and gave the citizen that has been hurt, some of the citizens that had been hurt, he gave them some good berries before the vision ended and they came back and the secret door opened. So that from there, my party went straight through the secret door. The whole time Trixie is checking for traps, no traps so far. They went into N4, which has the first fragment, the fragment of despondence. 
and Jimmy tried touching the rocking horse to both the fragment and to the doll that's on the pedestal there. Nothing happened. He's been pretty disappointed in that, but he keeps testing everything with the rocking horse that he pulled from the room of Elixion. And then Iris was like, well, I'm going to touch it. She went and touched the fragment of despondence and watched it go into her. And then we gave her the little card that's got all the information on it with the advantage and disadvantages of that fragment. From there, my party headed back and went into area N5 where they had another living vision. And they went to the house of three women who took care of Elixion one night and we talked through all the box texts and we read that basically the Elixian want can't remember their names and they should go find him. So my party started outside of the home and they worked their way inside. But before they did that, they kind of checked out the gravestones to look to see if there were names on them. Not that didn't work. Uh, Iris tried remove curse and that didn't work on anything. So eventually they just went inside, so found the corpses and found basically the mayhem that is inside this house. And they spent a decent amount of time looking around the house, trying to find different things that would be useful. They did end up finding the three names. And as soon as they found that third name the ghosts appeared from the corpses and that is where we ended our session they made really good progress into the nether deep they made it one more one room further than i thought they would so my project of building the nether deep as they go is i'm probably not going to keep up with them but we're going to keep making it on the side anyway and that's it thank you guys a ton for watching i do appreciate it a huge shout out to my patrons we'll catch you in the next one